what to make of all the thunder on the right of late, on the streets, on the airwaves, and even in the halls of Congress. Our senior political correspondent, Jeff Greenfield, has filed this Sunday Journal. Stop saddling our children with unnecessary debt. From the tea parties on tax day last April. Where are the people protecting us in government? To the rancorous town halls on health care in August. To the gathering last weekend at the Capitol. Discontent is in the air. You can see it in the signs they carry. Hear it from the most prominent voices on talk radio, all from the right. States, Barack Obama, from Rush Limbaugh, is destroying the United States economy. Look at this. What do all of these names say? And most notably from Glenn Beck, whose radio program and Fox News telecasts draw millions with his apocalyptic visions of where the president is going. Does sacred honor even exist in Washington anymore? The reforms. You even heard it from the floor of the House. Would not apply to those who are here illegal. In an unprecedented outburst from Louisiana Congressman Joe Wilson. An outburst that made him an instant hero to some. We love Joe! What's brought these folks to the nation's capital? What's put them in the streets of dozens of American cities? What's swelling the ratings for conservative media? And maybe more significant, does this new militancy on the right pose an opportunity for the Republican Party or create a dilemma? Some of it seems very traditional, an outcry against a government that critics say has grown too big. When this protester from Memphis, Tennessee declares, we don't trust you, that's what she means. I think the extreme liberals have taken over. Some of it is aimed specifically and virulently at Obama, at his background, at his race, at his agenda, fascist, communist, both. Those present and former politicians who spoke to the rally, all Republican, assert that this is an insignificant fringe. South Carolina Senator Jim DeMint. Well, this is not really political, and it's certainly not a Republican rally. This is mainstream, the heart of America right now, that's standing up and speaking out about some things they're very concerned about. Protester Carol Fessler from Memphis, Tennessee, explains it this way. There have been there are some signs here that are show like pictures of Hitler, Stalin, and Obama. That comes from a fear, and I appreciate that. Um, and fear engenders anger. So, but the fear is, you know, if media's not doing its job, if government is just taking over every single thing that it can, and we now have an unfettered liberal, the radical left has got control of the process. That's the fear. You know, I, I used to call it the mainstream media, and I've been thinking for the last few days, it can't be the called mainstream media anymore because it's not. Indeed, that fear has been fed not by politicians, about, I mean, but by Fox News pundits. I mean, are, that's why I believe we now have to start calling it the fringe media, because that's exactly what it is. It is on the fringe. They're in bed with those in Washington and the special interests, and they're, they're lunatics. Some of them are absolute lunatics. Glenn Beck is the one that we want to thank for a lot of this. I listen to Fox News, which gives you both sides, and I think if you turn on some of the other stations that you only get a slanted side, which is the liberal side. Indeed, Fox News claimed in full-page ads this week that the other networks simply did not cover the protests. In fact, all of them did. The interesting thing about the political culture right now is that while people have access to more and more information, they also can isolate themselves more and more and get only information that they want to see and that they want to hear that reinforces the opinions that they already have. Joe Gaylord has been Newt Gingrich's key political strategist since Gingrich's days in the House. He remembers how populist anger in 1994 helped turn the Congress over to the Republicans. Right now, he says, this anger is not strictly a partisan party matter. I wouldn't confuse the conservative movement and the Republican Party because they're two different things. The Republican Party is sometimes a vehicle for the conservative movement. But I think what you saw actually uh, on the mall and what you saw at the town hall meeting was a genuine conservative uprising, sometimes involving Republicans, sometimes not. I think the really extreme nature of this, the virulence of it, makes it less politically uh, effective. 
Massachusetts Congressman Barney Frank has spent nearly 30 years in the House as a stalwart liberal. He sees real danger for the Republicans in the rise of this mad-as-hell sentiment. The very anger of it, the, the racist elements, the uh, irrational elements, the embrace of fiction, uh, the threats, I think that makes it much politically useful. For some Republicans, like 15-year veteran Walter Jones of North Carolina, the intensity on the right poses a dilemma. Indeed, he was one of only seven Republicans in the House who voted to admonish Joe Wilson for his outburst. I don't like the, what I'm seeing in, in many circles. I don't like this, uh, this resentment. I mean, the way I look at this, uh, uh, Mr. Obama's our president. I want him to do well. I'm an American citizen first. So if some of your constituents, good, solid conservatives, come up and say, you know, Russia's, Rush Limbaugh says you're wimping out on the party. Or on the cause. Well, I serve God, not Rush Limbaugh. 